The midsize truck segment has been ruled by one truck and one company for far too long. GM has taken that into their own hands with their Chevy and GMC offerings, the Colorado as well as the Canyon. Behind me, I have that 2023 Canyon AT4X, which is their top trim that gives you the most luxury as well as the most off-road performance. Now, this truck is nearly $60,000 as it sits here. Is this truck worth it? We're gonna take a look at it today and see what this has to offer, features, gadgets, and off-road capability, and see if it's worth that hefty price tag of nearly $60,000. Let's jump right into it. Starting in the front of the GMC Canyon AT4X, for 2023 we have an all new design front end as well as some other features that we'll talk about here in a little bit. Biggest thing right off the bat that I wanna address is the $645 optioned volcanic red tint coat color that really, really fits this truck well. It really emphasizes the body lines, the aggressive body lines on the hood, as well as how wide the vehicle is, how aggressive it looks, and this new design is just a killer overall design. Moving down below the volcanic red tint coat, we have this nice gloss black that kind of breaks up the color and kind of gives you a nice breakup of the design in the front end. Below that, we have two red tow hooks. Again, off-road capability as well as looks. You, they're red so you can see them, and that's really the only thing. Down below, we have metal skid plates in the front as well as underneath the transmission. And then if we move over to the headlights, we have LED DRLs, LED headlights, as well as LED fog lights that are standard on the AT4X. Now moving on back, not only do we have the mud terrains for off-road, we also have these rock guards or the rock sliders or uh, rocker panel guards, whatever you want to call them. They are factory for the AT4X. Nice and beefy. I have used this type of rock slider on the Colorado in the ZR2 AEV edition. We tested it down in California a couple of weeks ago, and these are very sturdy. Same with the skid plates that are standard on this AT4X. Now moving on past that, we have the AT4X emblem right above that on the front door. Color matched door handles with a push button to lock and unlock the car with the key stuck in your pocket. We have these gloss black mirror caps with your blind spot indicator in the mirror itself. We have a camera underneath that is part of the HD surround vision, like I mentioned, to give you that 360 surround. In front, we have a GMC embossed in this reflector right here. And one thing I didn't mention is these are mud trains and this has a 17 inch machine face aluminum wheel that really pairs well with this tire as well as the overall design of the Canyon AT4X. In the back of the Canyon AT4X, we have a newly designed tailgate that is nicely designed to fit the rest of the aesthetic of the vehicle. So we have this nice upper bulge portion here with this plastic lining at the very top with a nice like almost like little duck bill spoiler. We have a little bit of a design here in the very top and I'll show you that here in a second. Moving on down below, we have a plastic pole handle for the tailgate that has a camera integrated inside of it. And that is part of the HD surround vision like I mentioned a couple times before. Below that we have the GMC logo still in the same color as in the front. Nicely matching this paint, but the massive GMC logo fits this big tailgate very nicely. Canyon indication below that, AT4X on the passenger side and nothing on the driver side. So nothing to indicate over there. The tailgate is soft open, we'll touch on that in a second. Moving down below, plastic insert on top of a metal bumper that is paint matched with parking sensors integrated. So nice design on the plastic part of the tailgate or on the plastic part of the bumper. It has nice traction and you will not slip. This does not have the easy step uh, bed corners so that you cannot uh, use that like you can in the heavy duties and the 1500s. So that is not optioned on this vehicle. Down below, as you can see, we have a trailer hitch with trailer connections right here, your four pin, as well as your other trailer connection. Now this vehicle can tow up to 6,000 pounds. Uh, optioned on different trims, you can tow up to 7,700 pounds, but since this vehicle doesn't have uh, the pro grade trailering system, it can only tow up to 6,000 pounds. So unfortunately, it's kind of uh, diminished because this is the AT4X. So other trims like the Denali AT4, as well as the Elevation, equipped properly can tow up to 7,700 pounds. Now opening the tailgate, this is a soft open, so it is damped, slowly opening, like I mentioned, design right here on the top of the tailgate. We have a nice like ruler type situation here on the edge of the tailgate, so if you need to measure something out, it's a nice, nicely equipped piece of your truck and it's always gonna be there. If you don't have a tape measure, you can just use this. It goes up to 48 inches wide. Under the hood of the GMC Canyon, we still do not have a gas hood prop. This is still a manual hood prop that you have to kind of go the old fashioned way and you think at nearly $60,000 for the price tag, you'd get a gas truck, but no, you do not. But what you do get is a nice, powerful turbocharged 2.7 liter inline four 
turbocharged motor that produces 310 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque. Now this motor is paired to an 8-speed automatic transmission and this powertrain combo, this engine and transmission is the only option or the only configuration you can get for the GMC Canyon. Prior they had three different engine options, a 2.5 liter inline four, a 2.8 liter Duramax as well as a naturally aspirated 3.6 liter V6. A couple different transmission options as well, but this year GMC has made it very simple to give you only one option to choose from, making the ordering process kind of straightforward in the powertrain department. Now this motor and transmission combination in two wheel drive gets you 16 miles per gallon combined for the AT4X. Now you can get better miles per gallon if you go different trim levels, smaller tires, less lift, and it's less of a brick going through the air. And that's why this thing gets such bad gas mileage is the mud terrains, the lifts, and things of that sort. Overall, in the driver's seat, I can get very comfortable between the adjustments in the seat, the overall seat feeling itself. Nice bolster, it's not too tight and it's not too loose. It doesn't feel like I'm just sitting on a piece of fabric. It feels like it's cradling me nicely and it doesn't feel constrictive at all. I also have a tilting and telescoping wheel where I can get a nice position where I feel comfortable at six foot one. Overall, in the back seat, I do find that it is a little bit stuffy just for the overall size and my size personally. If you're a little bit smaller, it might not be as bad, but overall, I'm gonna rate this a six out of 10 just for uh, the lack of leg room. The headroom isn't too bad. They have this nice divot out of the ceiling and it kind of comes over to the side so you are not hitting your head. But headroom overall, a couple of inches from the top of my head to the roof. And then for the center, we have a padded armrest with two cup holders and a connection through the middle. So you can put some objects in there other than cups, but it has these nice rubber bumpers so you can fit a few different sizes of cups if you are in need. Inside you can find the obsidian rush interior color with ceramic white accents. And the seat is a very attractive seat. It has perforations throughout the middle, up the seat back, and then it's broken up nicely between the white and the black with these red accents. You can find red stitching all throughout the seat back, red stitching going throughout the headrest, and then all the way down, nice AT4X logo embroidered on the right side of your driver's seat and the left side of your passenger seat. That red stitching continues throughout the vehicle. So you can see here on your armrest, nice padding, double stitched, and then your cup holders for those rear seats. Opening up the center console, we press the button on the front. That pops open nice and sturdy so it stays open and does not flop back down. We have this removable cubby that is big enough to store wallets, keys, small objects of that nature. Take that out, put that to the side. And then inside, it's nice and deep, wide access, where we can find a 12 volt cigarette lighter, charger right there. No lights or anything on the interior of the center armrest, but there is that camo pattern that you are gonna find throughout the rest of the interior. But this is big enough to house maybe a half gallon of milk. Up past the center armrest, you're gonna be able to find two cup holders, driver, passenger one, and then a phone holder right in the middle. Slide your phone in there and it stays sturdy whether you're charging it or just placing it there while using the wireless car play. In front of the cup holders, we have our electronic parking brake, our drive mode select, as well as our four low, four high, automatic four wheel drive, and our two high selector there. This is a two speed transfer case, so we can select from those features. We have our gear select, so we have park, reverse, neutral, drive, and low. In front of that, we have our Qi wireless charger, that camo pattern that you found in the cup holders and center console continues on up here. We have our USB-C, USB-A, and up above that we have a couple of different buttons that control quite a few features. So starting off we have our rear diff lock, our front diff lock, and our auto off on. So when you stop at a stoplight and the car turns off, really annoying sometimes, especially if you are trying to launch it and race somebody. Just kidding, no racing on public streets, only in Mexico. Or at a racetrack, but you turn that off, that turns that off, your hazards, your lane keep assist, auxiliary power, as well as a window switch that pushes all the windows down at the same time. Above that, we have an HVAC vent for the driver, passenger, and the dual climate control so we can choose what temperature we want, whether we're on the driver or passenger side. Now, driver and passenger both get heated and cooled seats selected up here. And then we have some of our HVAC controls where we can turn fan speed up or down, where the air is going and things of that sort. Now that we have this turned on, let's take a look at our 11.3 inch infotainment screen. Real quickly, you know how Apple CarPlay works. It's wireless. We got that going here. We have some nice chase and status going on our music. Our Google Maps equipped infotainment system that is previewed right there. Scrolling over, we can take a look at our apps, our camera app where we can turn that on and it'll show us all the way around the, all the, way around the vehicle, part of our HD surround system. And then we go over to the last slide of our homepage and we have a couple of off-road features that I wanted to go over. 
So main one is our air down mode, very cool app that you can utilize while off-roading. If you want to lower your tire pressure and you don't want to have to keep checking on your tire pressure gauge, you can go ahead and set it to your desired pressure. When I go off-roading, I usually go about 18 PSI. You go ahead and press start if the vehicle is on, this would be illuminated. Press start and then as you're airing down, the horn will honk when you achieve that desired tire pressure, which is honestly a very handy tool that I actually did not know about before getting this vehicle. And it just is one of those things that GM thought about and just knocked out of the park. Going back to our home screen, our last off-road section, we're gonna go to our Baja and that'll show us the telemetry, like our G-forces as well as steering angle and where our transfer case is. So right now we're just in two-wheel drive, nothing crazy. Going over to our terrain, our telemetry, our pitch, our roll, our tilt. On overlanding, we have our compass as well as our elevation. Down below, it gives you your coordinates. Overall, a really nice screen to have if you are gonna be taking your AT4X off-road. Up above the all digital gauge cluster, we have a 6.5 inch multicolored heads up display that is standard on the AT4X and optional on lower trim vehicles. But this is equipped on this vehicle. Very nice feature to have. Kind of hard to show on camera because it doesn't like to be on camera, but a 6.5 inch multicolored display. Nice to have that. So you have your miles per hour up there and you can change different settings as well as turn it on and off from your 11.3 inch infotainment system. Up on the center dash, we have a little bit more storage with that camouflage design continuing. Our Bose speaker right there indicating that we do have a Bose premium sound system. And that is the only indication throughout the vehicle. There is no indicators down below on the door panels and nothing else throughout the vehicle. On the driver's side door panel, we have our memory seats right here. Press one, two, two different settings for our memory seats, lock and unlock, as well as our window switches here down below. Overall performance wise, I got a 7.2 0 to 60. This is rated at around a 6.5, 6.8 0 to 60. I was not able to get that. Now, if you were to get into some certain modes and different traction levels, where I am, um, the surfaces are fairly smooth and not very rough. So I did find that there was a little bit of wheel spin. Uh, when that turbo kicked in on that 2.7 liter turbo engine, it just seems like it spun every time in rear wheel drive. I did not launch it in four wheel drive. I just wanted to get a base zero to 60, just as it would, you turn it on and you go fast. That's what it's gonna be. So I got a 7.2 zero to 60, which overall isn't too bad for having massive mud terrain tires on it. That's really not bad. Three inch lift, this thing's a brick going through the air. So 7.2 seconds, not too shabby. So for braking, I find that the brakes work great in this truck. Now the biggest downfall is the mud terrain tires when you are getting on the brakes hard. And what I mean by that is mud terrain seem to have a lack of traction in certain situations. When you're off-road, obviously like in mud, those things are gonna shine. But when you are on cement, asphalt, tarmac, whatever you're on, I mean, you're gonna find that it does lack a little bit of traction in those emergency situations. So when I'm slamming on the brakes, I do find that the ABS kicks in because I am skidding a little bit, but the brakes are stopping a lot of rotational mass between those mud terrains and these aluminum wheels. It's stopping a lot of rotational mass, a lot of mass in the vehicle, nearly 5,000 pound truck. The brakes feel great overall. The pedal itself is nice and linear has a nice firm feeling to it. I don't find there to be any dead spots in the end or at the beginning of initiation. Some trucks I find that like the first little bit, there's almost like a computer delay between when you tip into the brake and when you actually feel the car starting to slow down. So overall, brakes feel great in my opinion. I don't find it the need for any bigger brakes and this is an off-road type vehicle. It's not a performance-based vehicle like a track-based vehicle. So you're not gonna really get like that heat soak off-road you might start seeing some things like if you are going down hills and uh, kind of hard Baja type racing maybe you can find like the limits of the brakes but overall I don't think the general consumer is going to find the limits of the brakes on this vehicle for what it is intended for. Now as for handling I do find this truck to be stiff and that's kind of a good thing and a bad thing and the reason being is this has the DSSV Multimatic shocks on it and it is a off-road capable vehicle. So there is kind of a give and take in the off-road scene. When you do have a like Baja high-speed type suspension equipped on your vehicle, it is gonna ride a little bit stiff on the road. But when you go off-road, you really do find where these shocks shine and it really makes you kind of be okay with the stiffer ride on road. But for handling, I do find that around corners, it's very planted, feels very compliant, and I just don't find that I need any softer suspension because any softer, you're gonna get a lot of body roll. This is, feels very planted. Granted, this does have a three inch lift over stock height, 
So it is kind of center of gravity is kind of a little bit higher than normal. So it is gonna be a little bit tippy, but the suspension paired with that kind of solves all those problems. Now on road, if you are gonna be daily driving this, I might suggest looking at a different trim that is a little more road worthy or a little bit more road centric. This one is definitely an off-road vehicle on road. It's not an on-road vehicle off-road, if that makes any sense to you. Now overall ride quality, I'm gonna rate that at a C plus. Now reason being, this is where that give and take comes into play. So it is nice in corners where it feels stiff and planted, but for overall ride quality, it is a stiff ride. When you hit a bump, when you hit a pothole, you feel it. I mean, with these mud terrains, they are a thick tire. You have stiff suspension that is made for off-road. So overall ride quality is stiff, but compliant. When I find potholes, you do feel them, but it doesn't shake your body. It doesn't shake the vehicle apart. So when cruising at 60 miles an hour and you floor it and let it rev out through the gear, I got 80.5 decibels as my highest max reading. So overall, I'm gonna rate the interior cabin noise at a C plus. Not too bad for what it is. Three inch lift, off-road suspension, mud terrains. It's really, you know, you make sacrifices, but overall not too bad in the grand scheme of things, right? You, it is a little bit louder than like an all season tire or a summer tire, but you know, you look cool doing it. So keep that in mind. You're gonna look like a monster going down the road with mud terrains and how wide the vehicle is. So where the negatives are, there's also a positive to go along with it. So keep that in mind. Now for fuel economy, this is where it gets a little bit confusing. So on paper, it says that this is rated at 16 city, 16 highway, and 16 miles per gallon combined. Now online, I have seen that this gets much better gas mileage, and I'm actually seeing that myself. So I have driven this vehicle 427.9 miles, and I've gotten 17.8 miles per gallon combined. And that is a lot of highway driving and also a lot of zero to 60s and just getting in the throttle, going over the mountains. I uh, was passing cars because it's 2.7 liter turbo, it definitely likes to be in boost and at higher RPM. So honestly not driving this thing gentle and I'm getting much better gas mileage than what it's rated for. Now let's touch on some pricing for the GMC Canyon AT4X. So we have four different trim levels to choose from. We have the Elevation AT4, the Denali, and then at the top we have the AT4X like we had here. Now the base trim Elevation can come in the two-wheel drive variation or the four-wheel drive variation. The two-wheel drive starts at 38,395. Add some more money on top of that, you get four-wheel drive with $41,695. Now if you jump all the way to the top trim, which is the AT4X, which is four-wheel drive only, that is going to start you at $56,995, but that is not where it ends. The AT4X actually has another package option that you can choose, which is called the first edition, and that can set you back over $69,000, depending on how you equip it. But the vehicle as equipped that we are testing now is $58,640. Now you might be wondering what that Edition 1 is and why it's so expensive. That gets you underbody cameras, skid plates, off-road bumper with a come-up winch inside of it, a 30-inch light bar that's integrated into that bumper, as well as B-Lock capable wheels. Now let's talk about some of the competition that the AT4X can face in this pickup truck market. The main competitor is going to be the Toyota Tacoma, with it being the TRD Pro, which is going to be the most equivalent to the AT4X. So the Tacoma has seven different, seven different trims. I'm not gonna go over all of them, obviously, but if you wanna get into a Tacoma, which is the SR trim, in a two-wheel drive platform is gonna be 30,925, but for four-wheel drive, it's almost another $6,000 at 36,360. And now when you jump all the way to the top to the TRD Pro, that is gonna set you back uh, around $49,000 with the manual or $52,235 and up depending on your options that you wanna go for or different packages, and that is for the automatic. So $52,000 for the TRD Pro Tacoma. Now the Tacoma comes with two different engine options. We have a 2.7 liter four cylinder that's gonna be on those lower trims, which is 159 horsepower and 180 pound feet of torque. And that is for the SR5 and the SR5 only. Now every other trim is going to get the 3.5 liter V6 that has been in the Tacoma for a very long time. That's 278 horsepower and 265 pound-feet of torque. Now, one thing I wanna mention is I am talking about the 2023 Tacoma. There is a 2024, an all-new redesign, new powertrain, all-new interior, new design, all of that good stuff. And uh, that is going through its publicity tour right now. It has not currently hit the markets for purchase, but it will be here soon, maybe at the beginning of 2024. The 2.4 liter non-hybrid turbo motor is going to get you anywhere from 228 horsepower up to 278 horsepower, depending on what trim level you go with. Now, if you do get the iForce Max, 
which as of right now isn't scheduled to be released until the spring of 2024. That's gonna get you 326 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque. So a massive, massive improvement in the powertrain capabilities from the 2023 to the 2024. Now, you do get some different things like a 14-inch touchscreen, uh, a bigger uh, gauge cluster as well, all digital gauge cluster, and that is optional. I'm sure the base trims will not have that. But this is gonna set you back anywhere from $28,000 for the base trim all the way up to $50,000 plus. Very similar pricing like we have now for the current TRD Pro or the current Tacoma. But for 2024, I'm sure it's gonna be just a little bit turned up as this is a brand new vehicle. The, the demand's gonna be insane. So I'm excited to see what is coming up for the Tacoma, see what's gonna be new with it and see how it drives compared to the old ones. I do have quite a bit of experience in those. So I am excited to see what they changed, see how it improved and all of that good stuff. Now the Tacoma isn't the only direct competitor to the AT4X. We also have the Nissan Frontier Pro 4X. Now the Frontier has a few different trim levels to choose from, but most importantly being the entry in the Pro 4X like we're gonna be talking about here, to get into a Frontier, it's gonna set you back $31,265, which is for the King Cab S trim, and that is in the two-wheel drive variant. Now, if you wanna go for the Pro 4X, it's gonna set you back quite a bit more money at $40,795, and then there on up, depending on what options or accessories you get. And that one also has a 6,100 pound towing capability. Uh, there is also a more expensive trim level, which is the hard body edition, kind of a special edition one for the 2024 model year. And that has an entry price of $45,000 and up. The Frontier has a 3.8 liter V6 motor that produces 310 horsepower and 281 pound feet of torque. So more than the Tacoma, but I would definitely say that Tacoma has a better driving experience in my personal opinion. I do actually like the transmission in the Frontier better than the Tacoma. So it's kind of a trade-off in both ways. But if I were to choose an off-road vehicle, I have a direct comparison between the two uh, in previous time. And I would say that the Tacoma handles off-road quite a bit better. I would personally choose the Tacoma over the Frontier, but that is my personal opinion. That is not facts. One thing I do want to mention is that for these mid-sized trucks coming in the next couple years, there is a lot of changes. Now the Canyon has already gotten its redesign or its refresh with a nice powertrain, but the Tacoma the next year is gonna change and I'm sure the Frontier is gonna bring some changes along the way to try to keep up with the competitions. Now, if you are in the market for a Tacoma, a Canyon, or even the Colorado or the Frontier Pro 4X, I'd say maybe just hang on for maybe six to seven more months until this Tacoma comes out and see what other manufacturers do to kind of keep up with the competition. Now, I do think that once that Tacoma comes out, it's gonna be right up on par with the Colorado and the Canyon design-wise as well as performance-wise, but I do see there to be changes coming year after year, and they're gonna continue to compete, especially in this off-road market, having the AT4X, the Frontier Pro 4X, as well as that TRD Pro. It is a very hot market that people wanna be a part of. They wanna have an off-road vehicle from the factory and they're gonna to continue to improve on these vehicles as well. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think and what your personal opinions are on all these vehicles, especially that upcoming 2024 Tacoma. There is a lot of changes coming through that one. So that's gonna be interesting to see where that stacks up against competition when we actually get it on road. Once again, I appreciate you guys watching my reviews and that is going to do it for the Canyon AT4X. And until my next review, my name is Nick with Auto Buyer's Guide. I will see you guys then.